our flagship, the Skunkwick Squig Burton, is recovering from a rather poor maiden voyage that resulted in a moderate degree of damage to the ship. During a Ninetales attack on Ambitious Dream Station in Crusader L1, faults with the ship's targeting and power systems prevented our gunners from being able to reliably engage targets. And so now I was heading aboard to carry out repairs and hopefully diagnose problems with the targeting and come up with a reliable procedure for the gunners. Unfortunately, I was about to be joined by another prominent skunk. We're going to do some diagnostic okay. work on the Greg Burton. Saw some interesting theories brought up yeah. in the comments of the video. You see stuff with the power settings and shield regeneration. Here's another thing I learned, right? Is that you have like, like as much as I would love to be like wandering around the bridge while I'm commanding the ship, you really need to be in the command right. position to, to do it properly. It'd be good if the command position had a radar that you could see instead of the radar behind you, but it is very, very difficult to command the ship while not at the front of the bridge. And I was about to find out that the damage was not the only souvenir from that fight. I'll open the hangar now actually while I'm on my way there. Ooh, ooh, that didn't look good. Hangar door just made something spark. Oh my god, something just fell off. What the hell was that? There is a gun. Oh, it's like, oh my god, it's a rail gun. It's just a rail gun out there. I think a rail gun probably sticks, got stuck in the mechanism of the door because now there is... Where we go? Here we go. I love that with decent quantum drive, it spools up almost immediately. I was heading over to Microtech to meet up with Marcuccio and carry out repairs. Microtech has the best ship systems retailers after all. Our meeting point would be Port Trestler in orbit above New Babbage. Now, repairs to the faulty turrets was of course the initial focus of our attention, but we also had concerns about the ship's power systems, and so a trip to engineering for a look-see was on the cards. The shield's regeneration power draw may have played a factor, according to comments on the last video. This is the shield. The I only the best, this is the FR-86 shield. Correct. Yes, I think... And we should have two. I think there should be one over here as well. Let's take a look. Yep, here's the second shield generator. The ability to directly access components in Star Citizen will one day lead to some amazing mid-battle repair moments, I am sure. For now at least, the engineering deck of large ships like the Carrack make for a really cool visit. This is the power plant. Okay. Very big box. <laughs> yes, it is. In here, are these, these, these are the cooling rooms, right? So cooling is here, yeah. We need to, we need to now test it. We need to go and test this. We need to go check, make sure that we've got targeting functioning on turrets and right. that uh, there are no other strange behaviors from the power system now. Engineer, engineering deck down here is really cool, isn't it? Yeah. We were setting out to systematically diagnose the remaining problems and work out procedures for crew to overcome them. Anvil Aerospace. All systems online. First gen or yellow? I'm yellow. Yeah. Yeah, yellow is just easier, isn't it, to get? Guns are working. I can't check targeting obviously right now because there's nothing nearby. But for our testing, we were heading to Yella to take on some mid-level bounties, nothing tough, just to see how the shield regen was affecting power and if targeting was now working correctly for gunners. Crusader, the Sunshine State. We noticed during the battle that the power was set in a very specific configuration too and so wanted to reproduce that in our tests. One of my biggest wishes for Star Citizen is for any of the ship's control panels to be able to make changes to ship system settings. But right now, at least, it seems generally only the pilot can. I did full shields. Oh, okay, Just no, no. I think power was one one notch away from full shields, like in both right, directions. Like 1783. There we go, yeah. That's where power was. And so the Greg Burton was once again heading into a fight, but really only very mild peril for this one. 
We actually wanted to get shot at for once. Okay, go target. I can, I can target it, so we'll try this now. Turret. It's a miss, so they're a little bit tough. Definitely let me know if you don't have targeting. <laughs> I've got target, yeah, I've got the target. Let me detarget and retarget see if that. Yeah. I'm gonna let them shoot this is that, okay? Yep. So I wanna see if the shield regeneration is affect affecting this. If the shield generator is yeah. kicking it. Target's gone. The remote turret was working correctly, but there were others to check. Shields. If you want to run to the yeah, yeah. left turret, okay, yeah, go yeah. ahead. I can't okay. keep us. It doesn't matter if they hit the shields a bit, because like we, we, we kind of want that to happen anyway, you know? Right. Okay, what's the left turret now? Re entering turret now. But on the left turret, I would notice a problem right away. Okay. Rolling over. They're not on, but they don't show up on radar for me. I'm not sure why. Oh, I, I think I, oh, I see them. Okay, they don't. I can't target them. Like, really? There's no. They don't show up on radar. Like there's no radar at all. Like it doesn't show up. Uh -huh. Can't target them, can't see like the target indicator. No 5 or T or anything. Nothing is working now. I'm not in scan mode because I can fire weapons. Right. So left turret right now. Try changing power, try resetting power. Okay. Power is reset to balance. Okay. So if that makes any difference. Let me try powering down turret and powering back up again. Because power settings are like, do look all fucked up actually. I'm just... Looks like we are overpower on the, uh, I'm looking at, like, shield screen. Uh -huh. Okay, now we're back to normal again. Powering down turret. Alright, turret's powered off. Turret's powered on. Okay, now I have target indicators, okay. Okay, now reset power back to where it was. Okay, I'm engaging one of those targets now. Gone. Oof, that's only like a, a big bang. Missile. Restarting the turret seems to fix the targeting problem and the radar With problem. Power balance. We had power balanced at the same time. Power balance, restart tur turret, okay. We need to confirm that, I think. Interesting, like, really interesting findings, right? Next up was the right side turret, but this one would prove much less problematic. Power is on. Thing is working. Weapons are working. Power looks good on the shield monitor. Yeah, I can I can shift shields to make power kick on on the shield generator. Watch that. Watch. It'll go. See it. I just boosted forward shields, so now systems are at max on power drain. So if you start shooting now, that'll Wait. draw even more power. Okay, so what you're telling me is we're not we're not generating enough power. We need a better power plant. Is that right? Do you think? It might be the case. Target to a twelve now. Let's just focus on that one, okay? Remember, I'm on your left side though. Okay. Next target is to your uh, seven o'clock ish. Shit! Okay. 
last target is here as well, moving off to the right side. They're, co they're coming into range, so weapons range has gotten really short, like really yeah. short. Shit. Two kilometers this path seems to be like weapon range. Yeah, they've reset everything low and they're gonna start going back up, so it should be a lot better after this happens. We should probably uh, we should probably inform pilots to try and keep power balanced, um, and gunners to cycle turret power when they get in. Maybe right. even if the turret is on when they get in, cycle the power. We'd concluded our testing and were relatively confident that with the new procedures, our crews could get systems running again properly. The power indication was a little concerning, but I am not really familiar enough with the readout to know what to make of it, and an A-rated military power plant is fitted already. For now, the Burton would rest. I was heading back to the Art Corp system to carry out another small task for Twitch. A staff area carrying drugs had crashed or been shot down on the moon Walla, and the drugs needed to be recovered before rivals or law enforcement could get their hands on them. I was heading down to the crash site to see if I could make it happen. I had a respawn point in the form of the Cutlass Red, but I still wanted to scout the area. It is possible the hostile borders had already arrived. I don't know the layout of a staff area as well as I should, and in this setting especially, this was completely new to me. I decided to call on some backup to assist me in clearing out the wreck, and by the time they arrived, the sun had fallen. Oh wow, there's some bright lights. <laughs> Not that it mattered much, as the Reclaimer was equipped with some pretty intense lights. There is lit up. <laughs> I can look up there, and if I zoom in, I can see you guys in the cockpit. We'll take a look at the Reclaimer in an upcoming video in more detail. For now, though, we were going in. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm 40 meters above you. Yeah, hey, hang on. I need to just look at you walk off the cliff. Yeah, just gonna move it. There's, uh, there was, there's one down inside the doorway anyway, but there was another one who moved off in a direction I did not see. Um, Shaq, let's move in and take the right. I'm gonna go left from the end of the hallway here if you take the right. Understood. Okay, let's move. Go left. Hit movement, but. Got a door, I got a door on the left side, left side of the room is clear. Don't forget to check the catwalks. Good idea. I got the stairs going up. I'm gonna, oh, movement. <laughs> down, Jesus. He came charging down those stairs. Okay, I'm gonna move it to the catwalks. Okay, if you, do you wanna take the right, the right side here, Shaq? Copy. Contact other side. Yeah, he's behind a window. Alright. Oh, wow, he came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that actually made me jump. <laughs> Jesus. I'll clear the top level. Roger, okay. <laughs> With the wreck clear, we could recover the small quantity of uncut slam and bring it aboard the Cutlass. I'll move it back to the Cutlass. Alright, top level appears to be clear. Good work. There's, there should be a package up there somewhere. You guys can carry yeah, if you want to bring the stuff onto this ship, because obviously this ship moves a lot faster, uh, we can use this ship to transport it. I think the last one might actually be on the roof because I don't see a way to get up to where this one, last one is up here. I don't see one up here. Oh, there's a pickup package, right? The drop point was a settlement quite close to the crash site. It didn't take us long to make the flight there, and with our rescue ship lights turned on as a potential disguise, we sat down on the landing pad doing our very best lure burning citizen impression. Right up until carrying very large parcels of drugs out the door, that is.
the drop point was a Kovalex shipping kiosk, and the employee on shift here didn't seem at all bothered by the three heavily armed individuals present, all carrying an enormous stash of slam in their hands. Funnily enough, the staff here was not the only crash reported this week, with a caterpillar also going down on Walla. Twitch was in less and less need of freelancers like us to carry out her bidding, and so we were looking to poorly paying legitimate excursions for the time being. And this being a legitimate tasking, I was heading in to recover the flight recorder. Seeing ships crashed on the surface like this really gives you a great sense of this scale, with many taking up the space similar to that of a large building even. And with the flight recorder aboard, we were on our way back to Area 18 to put to rest any mystery about the crash. While back in the city though, a visit to Twitch would see us leaving empty-handed. I appreciate your enthusiasm, but it doesn't mean I've got anything for you. For now at least, it was time to move on. I'm sure we'll cross paths with Twitch again, and we'll be glad to do so, she has treated us well. But I was heading out to meet some of the other mission givers of Stanton. And if you think Twitch's criminal exploits are unethical, well, you have no idea how bad even so-called legitimate entities within the Stanton system can be. I'd like to thank all of you for watching again and for your very helpful comments in the last video highlighting potential problems with our turrets on the Greg Burton. That pool of knowledge was extremely useful in us coming up with solutions. I would also like to send out a massive thank you to Voland for the support of this series over on Patreon. Thank you Voland for your amazing and generous pledge. Patrons like you are what allow me the time it takes to edit these videos. There is currently a free fly event running in Star Citizen until the 27th of September, so if you're sceptical about the game or want to try it without spending money on a starter pack, now is the time. We'll be back with another video before the weekend, and thank you all again for watching.